Lift those hands to him. He is a yaya. Sometimes a chant can say more than words can do of who he is and how desperate you are for his presence. We love you. Jesus, we, we hold nothing back. You are Yeshua. You deserve all of us. All of us. Let this conference be the conference where people can point and say, that was the day, that was the conference when Jesus took all of me. When Jesus took all of me, that there will be no resistance of any kind. We honor you, Jesus. Yeshua. Yeshua. While everybody's standing, I won't be long, but it's the first tonight we want to break something. There's a prophetic thing we want to do from the Lord. Matthew 13, if you can put it over there, 24 to 28, New King James Version. Please, everybody stand while you are for the reading of God's word. I always honor the reading of God's word because if Biden came in here, whether we believe in him or not, the office will demand that we stand as part of protocol of receiving a president. And this happens to all, this honor all presidents have around the world. But I found out that there is no office higher than the office of the word. There is no office higher than the office of the word. The office of the word is so lofty until God himself has submitted the, all his names under his word. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Tiskidinu, Jehovah Elohim, every name. And since God performs miracles in his name, you can't use any of his names to sabotage his word. Because he has them packed. He has all of his names packed under the office of his word. It's not then difficult to imagine why God sent the word to be the one that died on the cross. Because you have put all your names under your word. So I always want people to stand up whenever we are. Even the crusader made them do it. As we read the, read the oracle of God and then we can sit down. I won't be very long, I promise you, but tomorrow I'll be much longer because tomorrow I want to speak about priesthood and the powers of the kingdom to come. Tomorrow we're going to really go deep. But today there's something God wanted to do. So there's more demonstration in this one. There's something God wants to do. It's part of the protocol of him launching this conference. Because if you're going to live in the miracle realm, then whatever is compromising our ability to sustain that realm must be removed. So let's read the scripture, Matthew 13. And after we read, praise team, you can go back to your seats as well. Matthew 13, except the guy with the lady with the keyboard. I love that. Maybe you stay. Maybe you end your right to stay. Everybody else will be able to go. Matthew 13, 24 to 28. I'm going to ask that at the count of three, you demonstrate your love for the word of God by reading it as loudly as you can. Make the devil mad and God happy in this place. Amen. Can I? So here we go. One, two, three, read. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted, and produced a crop. Then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner. Came and said to him. Sir. Did you not sow good seed. In your field. How then does it have tares. 28. 
he said to them, an enemy has done this. We just end there. An enemy has what? Done this. Father, help us decipher the word. In Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Please take your seats. Thank you. Oh God. I have been privileged by God that I have by God's divine grace. Because I consider myself just a donkey that got lucky that Jesus took me from the place where two roads come together and decided to journey with me into Jerusalem. And while people clearly, Hosanna, Hosanna, the biggest mistake I could make or the donkey could make is seeing that those adulations, that crying of the crowd had, had anything to do with the donkey. Other than the cargo, it was carrying on its back. I try to remind of myself, it's my favorite story in the Bible, is the story of the donkey that was loosed by God from the place where two roads came together. But I feel like, for me, that really describes my life because I was that donkey stuck at the place where two roads come together and the road in 1989 that looked most eminent was the road, was the door of death because I was definitely dying except for the divine encounter when Yeshua appeared to me in 1989 and he changed everything. As a Catholic young boy, I didn't know the supernatural was that real. But when Jesus walks in your bedroom, Everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes. And what is interesting, he never has to introduce himself because you just know him. He has an aura about him that when he walks next to you or looks in your eyes, you just know he knows everything and you know that you are fully known. You are fully known, but also fully loved and fully secure. And fully delivered. How one could learn that as a young believer in Christ at such in one encounter. Only when we get to heaven are we going to fully understand and appreciate what can be packaged by God in one encounter. May this weekend be a weekend of encounter for you. May the conference not just be the conference with men. May the conference be triggered by men but finished by God at night in your bedroom here at the hotel, wherever you are. Angels walking up in your room. God is standing up. May God continue the encounter right into your hotel rooms. May he find you. May you find him. May the encounter be so indelible, so powerful so unshakable that the sacrifices you thought you could never make, you will make in a second. So, I've been blessed by God to be found. I've been asked this, I mean, even this time I was on Sid Roth. Sid asked me the question that others have, that others have asked me, but I can't answer it because I'm not God. He said to me, Francis, why does God give you mysteries like this that nobody in the body of Christ has ever talked about and there you write a book about it? I said, I don't know. I don't know. But I just hope and pray that I live up to why that is the case. So when. So when in 2011. In the technology of encounter. He came for me again. To give me. The mystery. Of the bloodlines. When he came and spoke to me and he said, I've come to show you the pathway, the methodology to activate genetic salvation 
in the body of Christ. I never even heard of the word genetic salvation. Out of that would come a book that I wrote in two weeks. The book that would first introduce me to Sid Roth. Because Patricia King had me in a program on jamming the bloodline. And we God moved so mightily that we ended up doing three shows instead of one that she had scheduled. And then she shut down our entire operation for three hours. 45 staff members she had at that time. Including her husband. She stole, including her husband. She said, we cannot let you go because we all need to jump the bloodline. I know that something supernatural was happening because I know that she's, this, uh, she's, one of, she's one of those people in the body of Christ that has some weight in the spirit and is connected to so many men of God that I would only be so blessed to even be on the same platform with some of these guys. And yet she felt there was something intrinsically supernatural in this simple prophetic act of jumping the bloodline. And sure enough, they did it. And then the miracles began. Things happen in that office, in that ministry. And then, of course, the revelation took a life of its own once Sid Roth found about it. Called me. Said, I want to hear about this jump in the bloodline. Can, can, you, can you bring it on my show? And sure, I did, 2013. Then, then there was an explosion. It was such an explosion for, of desire and need for the revelation from the world that Sid Roth had a six weeks, six weeks waiting list for anybody to get the book. They never had anything like that. That way. That's what they told me. And, see, and, and Sid Roth told me in 40 years I've never seen a, a simple prophetic act that has produced more miracles from generational iniquity and other things than this. I can't explain it either. Except to say it came by the it came by revelation. And I'll get into that encounter just very little, very briefly, not like I've done in the past. Because the river is always different, same story, same revelation, but the river is always different because of the nature of the hunger and the nature of the of the time of the people that I'm standing before. But the revelation took a life of its own that I that, that, that I can tell you, my wife will tell you that having taught on jumping the bloodline, I don't know if it's to my own dismay or whatever, but I hear about the miracles happening around the world around jumping the bloodline. People are still doing it. People are still doing, talking about amazing miracles, things happening. But today, I was commanded was commanded. God said to me today, my people must jump the bloodline. Even those who have done it before, what I'm going to do tonight is different. The prophetic act will be very potent tonight. And ask, oh God, I said, God, why? I mean, you know, because I had prepared a different message that I wanted to bring Tonight, no jump the bloodline. But if I've learned anything else in this stage of my development with God, when He speaks, there's only one option. It's a four-letter word, obey. I remember recently, I was, uh, recently I'm not going to tell you what the, the, the whole story behind it. But God told me to do something, I did, to do something. That my soul didn't want to do because my soul had worked up itself and bought into a different plan. You know how we can all do that. And I thought the plan was good. It was going to be good even for the kingdom. And I bought into it. My soul made it upon the thing. It grew in me. And just when my soul had done, I'd done all the buying into this new, into this plan, he came to me and he said to me, Francis, I was having a worship time. I was actually singing the song, just reminds me. Hey, yeah, yeah. 
Hey, I, hey, I. I was in that time. It was early in the morning. And then he said to me, Francis, oh boy, how I pray that one of the things God wants to do today by jamming the bloodline, many of you have got so many demonic distortions in your bloodline, they are interfering with the voice of God. God said to me, some people that can't hear me and the times we're living in, not hearing God will kill you. I'll say it again, where we are going, not hearing God will kill you. Because the curvature of response is collapsing. The curvature of, of response before you are hit is collapsing. So, Brother Elizabeth, he said, Francis. I said, yes, Lord. said, yes, Lord. I was so full of joy since the encounter. It's like he put a bucket of love for him in me. I've never felt before. I even felt it in my fingers how much I love him. He did something to me. So I said, yes, Lord. I thought I was pretty cooked, but I guess I was not yet. It's a daily thing. We die daily. We die daily. He said, Francis. I said, yes, Lord. The thing you are planned to do. And I saw the thing. And when as soon as I saw it, the thing, my soul said, no, please, Jesus. Please don't speak to that. Please, I do not do what I think you're about to do. Karabo shut. You know, Lord, I love you, but please don't do what you're about to do. He says, no, I'm going to do exactly what you think I'm going to do. This thing, you cannot do it. I would, I would love to report that I responded and I said yes immediately. But my soul had been so wrapped up in this thing. It was not sinful. It was a great idea that I believed was going to be, be work wonders for the gospel's sake. And it was a gospel idea. It was an idea formulated for the sake of the gospel. There was no ulterior motives. There was nothing for me. That was my only thing. And he says, you can do it. Hmm. I fought through it. Tried to justify it. And the more I justified it, a cutting, a cutting began in my soul. You know, like a cutting. And the longer I took the cutting, tried to wish it away, pray it away. Finally, the following day, he came for me. Isn't he amazing? He said to me, you have still not said yes. This thing you cannot do. Then he gave me an, an angle on it. He asked me a question that I answered. And then he said to me, if you know that, why are you trying to cheat on me on doing this thing when I've asked you not to do it? Standing in that altar, preaching, without people knowing. See, there's a realm in God where you can be ministering and yet you are also in another realm talking to him. Everybody was, hallelujah! Revelation! But they don't know that the man of revelation was in a fight of his own over something more potent than even what I was preaching. And right there without the people knowing, I said, yes, Lord, I'm sorry. Then my soul let it go. And I died. It was a dying. I let it go. I let it go. Yes, Lord, you can do it. And I thought, surely now that I've fully surrendered to this thing, He will give me peace. No, the cutting of the soul continued into the night in the middle of a crusade where miracles are working. He's working miracles, including raising the dead around me. And Father, I said to him, I said, Lord, Lord, I said yes five hours ago. 
Why are you still cutting my soul? He says, I'm not cutting. He said to me, he said to me, he said to me this. He says, because yes, you did obey. But the reason of the cutting in the soul has continued because you have not answered an equally important question. I said, Lord, what's that? He says, why did it take me 48 hours to make you say yes? Why did it take me 48 hours for you to say yes? Why did it take 48 hours for you to give me back my property? And I said, oh my God. He said to me, Francis, the curvature of human response to what I'm saying is collapsing. Next time, there will not be 48 hours because the enemy would have hit you before your 48 hours of disobedience came to an end. The curvature is coming to an end. What is this going to do with the message today? Everything. So when I was in my room preparing for this, God said to me, you are going back to jump in the bloodline tonight. I, wanna, I want my people to jump the bloodline. And he began to say to me, he began to show me, he said to me, I want them to jump the bloodline because during the COVID area, a lot of blood was shed. It's okay, I know. I said, no, 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 you don't know. A lot of blood was shed. And since blood is a currency of our realm, because blood is a currency of our realm, God spoke to me, he said, during COVID, the blood that was sacrificed, rivers of it, empowered the fallen ones to install demonic programs in the bloodlines of many of my children, whether they took the vaccine or not while they slept. Oh, I didn't take the vaccine, but while men slept, the enemy came. Satan doesn't really need a vaccine to change your DNA. It makes it easy, but he can also change it while men slept. And the enemy came. And they said, what? Do you not put God said in this field? And he says, an enemy has done this. While men slept, the enemy came. God said to me, Tonight, I'm coming to cleanse the bloodlines. Tonight, I'm coming to remove demonic distortions to the voice of God. Some of that came from the trauma. Some of you even suffered through COVID, losing loved ones. Do you know that the, it is the, do you know that the economy of the blood is so, is so deep that men with natural machines that are not supernatural can take your blood and read the events in your life that marked you. If men, men, Find that men with natural instruments can tell you this marker in the blood tells us there was a trauma. What trauma did you have? And look, how did you know? Because the blood's speaking. If men can do that, you think super intelligent beings from the second realm? don't have better sophisticated equipment or technologies to read even more than what the doctor can read. And use what they read. Talk to me somebody. Use what they read. To plan your demise. Or how they can control you. To 
Tonight I believe God wants to do something supernatural in our bloodlines. So lines in the bloodlines. Some of the programs look like lines. These are fourth lines. Some of us are cutting programs of limitations in our bloodlines. Even though you yet want to believe, but you really can't do it. Because there are programs that immediately rise to challenge that and say, you can do it. You're not worthy of it. You can't do greatness like that. Not you. But the devil is a liar. God's going to set us free. God's going to set us free. Talk to me, somebody. God is going to what? Set us free. In the encounter that I'm talking about, in the encounter that I'm talking about in 2011, I was surrounded by the glory of God, and then I really, literally, I'm, I'm catching a lot of details only because I don't want to be long. I want to get to the prophetic act. Build your faith, something supernatural to happen. You know, I end up in this encounter and I bumped, and his presence was all around me. I lost all sense of time. In the middle of the night, I mean, about 9 p.m. of the night in Texas. And I, heard, and, and I heard Jesus said, let's take a walk. And I, be, and, and, I, and I realized now it was a walk in the glory. I have no recollection how I walked from the parking lot to the, to the front end of the Gaylord Resort, which, the, which was like a good seven-minute walk. I have no idea how I got there, except there was a major download that became the book called Breaking Generational Curses Under the Order of Melchizedek. The Lord began to speak to me he said to me, it's time, it's time, it's time. He said three times. I said, Lord, time for what? He says, time for my people around the world to experience genetic salvation. And I'd never heard, and I'm a theologian with around people like Peter Wagner at the time, uh, in that network of guys at that time, and other people like John Eckert, people that were into deliverance ministry and different things, never heard that word genetic salvation. So I said, God, what do you mean by genetic salvation? So genetic salvation is when the finished work of the cross is applied to the healing of my people's broken down genetics until Satan has no room, no space in their DNA to hinder their destiny. And right after that, he, he, that's when the germ in the blood was revealed to me. Right after that, it's when the Lord showed me a group of men and women standing in front of a bloodline. But the blood was real, action, real. It was a stream of blood. And I got close to it. And I heard noises I never heard before. Shrieking noises. I very, I mean the level of dissonance in this, in this sounds was amazing. Eerie. And I remember Telling Yeshua in the encounter, what is this, Lord? And he said to me, this sounds you are hearing in the blood is the voice of iniquity in the bloodlines of men. Every sound is conjuring up a particular spirit to enforce special Iniquities and liens that are against those bloodlines. He said to me, I died to silence these noises in the blood. I died to silence these noises. You know, 
And then in the encounter with the Lord, the Lord speaks to the men and women that were standing in front of the bloodline, which I knew in the dream, uh, in a vision, that they were all believers. If you've ever been in the realm of the Spirit, there's no talking. The whole time the Lord spoke to me, he didn't open his mouth because speech is slow in that world because telepathy, thought to thought, is the only way the spirits communicate. And, I, and he's speaking. He say, and he says to them, jump! And these men and women jumped the bloodline what I was watching. And then the bloodline in the vision, the stream of blood, the river of blood, human blood, disappears. And I said to the Lord, Lord, what happened? What happened to the bloodline? What happened to it? He said to me, I have cut it off. I have cut it off. He said the jumping over the bloodline was a prophetic exchange of the sons of men coming out of their own bloodline by prophetic act and jumping into mine. And since you can't trace mine, and I also removed the other one, he said to me, this what you see, you must do around the world. And he said, you will see more miracles. And that's what Sidra was talking about. More miracles than anybody. More miracles. And the more miracles really came from because of what happened with that show. My wife and I were uh, in Israel. And I'll read you two more scriptures and I'm going to pray. Call it a night. But I want to end at a very high long. <sighs> My wife and I were in Israel. When Sidroth asked me to chair, to be the captain of a bus. Uh, we had about 300 people, so I was a bus captain in one of the buses. There were seven speakers who had been on Supernatural. I was one of those, so he made us bus captains for each of the buses. Just happened to be on this bus where this woman from Canada had come to be with Israel with seed. And when she saw me, she beamed like nobody business. business. She said, Dr. Marge, you won't believe this. Dr. Marge. He said, he said, you changed my life. You jumped the line, changed my life. What happened? He said, I was born with six toes. And growing up as a young girl and then growing up in adulthood, people would laugh at me. But despite at school, they would laugh at me. And I felt hideous. So I grew up with a sense of rejection, not feeling like I'm beautiful because of, this, because of that genetic deformity, whatever it was. She said, until now, I never used to wear shoes. Most women wear. I wore shoes to make sure I hide the six toe. Then one day, I saw you on Sid Roth. Talking about jumping the bloodline. In my room in Canada, I took a belt, I put it on the ground to represent the bloodline. I was desperate. So I prayed a prayer with you and I jumped the bloodline. So I was not expecting what would happen next. So within 48 hours, both the six toes dried up and fell off. And she actually had before and after pictures. Things like that. Things like that. I was with Guillermo Maldonado in uh, Miami. Because he wrote, called him. He said, you got to have this guy. And he flew me to Miami. And at King Jesus, 4,500 people that night in the evening service. There were so many miracles, Maldonado stopped counting. He stopped getting testimonies. But we didn't lay hands. They only jumped a line. How do you explain that? Except that when God reintroduces something, he takes care of the results. So many testimonies, but one I'll never forget was a boy of 18 years, I think 17 or 18 years. Maldonado interviewed him, but he was crying you could feel that he was crying from a very deep place. He was hugging his mom and dad and kissing them. It was, it was very impactful. Maldonado, Apostle Maldonado asked him, what's going on? 
He said, I don't understand. My parents are good to me. But there was something in me that hated them. So no matter how much love they showed me, the more love they showed me, the more I went out of my way to break their hearts. I would repel them. I would do things just to stab them back. I couldn't understand. I couldn't stop myself because their actions were so loving. But they kept up. Parents, you know, parents have an amazing grace. Amazing grace. And the boy cried. He said, I don't know. But as soon as I jumped the blind, as soon as I jumped that red, 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 red rope over there, he says, this thing that has made me hate my mother came out. Now I feel for the first time in 17 years love for my mother and dad. And at the altar they hug. Father is crying. Mother is crying. How would you explain that? That's a teenager. Teenagers don't lie. It is what it is. I've seen so many things. Why am I giving you this? To let you know that foreknowledge is always ahead of the demonic. I said foreknowledge is always ahead of the what? The demonic. COVID was by design. It was not a pandemic, it was a pandemic. You know that now. It was planned. Because Satan needed blood, the currency of blood, to open up a new dispensation of time and the days of evil. Is it amazing that just after COVID, it's like there is a pandemic of transgenderism? What do you think the enemy was buying with that blood? Now they are saying six out of every girl in America is having gender dysphoria. Six out of every ten. This was an outlier. This just ten, five, ten, five, ten, twenty years was an outlier. Now six out of every ten girls having gender dysphoria. I'm telling you, God is never late. Somebody give God a shot, he's never late. God is never late. God, not only is God never late, God is never surprised. He's never, he's ne he never said, oh myself, I didn't see this one coming. So tonight, in a few minutes, we're going to do it. I want to read two scriptures and then we're going to pray. Again, my wife follows me. She's just like, I just never know where you're going to come from because I never know either. I've never told jump the line this way. But I can only open my mouth and you will feel it. I mean, you can open your mouth and you will feel it. Please just look at um, Psalm 16, 5 and 6. Psalm 16, 5 and 6, very quickly. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance. And by the way, do you know nothing can cut inheritance better than the blood? There is no vehicle that has been found under the earth that can cut inheritance better than the blood. reason you're going to give your children should God tarry and you have to go home. The reason you're going to will your house, your cars, your businesses to your children 
is because the blood speaks. That they have an inheritance with you. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my Lord. The lines are fallen to me in prison and what? Places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Say it with me. The lines are fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Why did I read that? Because God showed me when people jump the bloodline tonight, the lines are going to begin to fall. The enemy is going to begin, the God, angels are here to begin to recorrect some of you during COVID because of this demonic programming that was happening, these demonic atmospheres that took, that covered the whole earth for two and a half years. Until COVID, we never thought that it is possible to lock down the whole world. But can I prophesy to you? There's about to be a glory global lockdown. I said there's about to be a glory global lockdown. That the glory of the Lord is going to hit. There will be no country on earth where there is not a revival that you can dismiss. God's going to do something. Come on somebody. But the lines are going to fall in pleasant places. Demonic configurations. Lines were put around your life. But the demonic powers to limit you, to disease you, to mess with you. Talk to me somebody. To control you with depression. Those lines are about to be destroyed. And the angels are here to create new lines of inheritance and breakthrough around your life. This is why you came to this conference. The name of Jesus. What's interesting about bloodlines when God began to... When, began, when, God began, when God gave me jump in the bloodline, because I was so blown away by how it's such a almost, you know, let me just say this, almost a foolish thing, like jumping a line. Come on, come on God, you couldn't come up with something better. You know what I found out, Pastor Suzanne? The foolishness of God is stronger than the wisdom of men. This is, come on God. But I found out something. Because of the line, and what began to happen, <laughs> I began to study lines. And I found out that in the Bible, whenever God's about to do something big, he will send an angel with the plumb line. Apparently, God loves to work through lines. And I also found out that life is really controlled by lines, whether you know it or not. Life is controlled by lines. What kind of lines? The lines we've crossed and the lines we've failed to cross. Some of you right now, you are diseased in your body. You haven't felt God's presence for a while, if you want to be honest. The reason being, you crossed the line. You should not have crossed. But today as you jump the bloodline, as you repent, God is going to fix that situation. And his presence will... Oh, what happened? You'll be like, I haven't felt like this for the past five months. Because I crossed the line. And some of us, the reason why we are, we are not experiencing mighty miracles, mighty things of destiny, is because of the lines we failed to cross. Some of us in our bloodline, Satan was busy lighting lines of inferiority, lines of limitations, lines of fear, lines of trauma, lines of depression. And those of you that have failed to cross those lines, he rules your destiny. Can't stop your salvation, but boy, is he playing a field with your destiny. But the devil is a liar. 
God's going to help us. In closing, there are two lines that affect us the most. There are two types of lines that affect everybody. And I give you those two lines and then we're going to jump the bloodline right now. Because when you jump the line, you need to know prophetically speaking tonight, the lines, they jump the line. And guys, get ready. Put the line already. Don't wait for me. Now I'm coming towards the end. Put the line. You guys know what to do? I told you what to do. Come into that thing. Right now, America is tethering at a line. Do you know that? This greatest country on earth that has been the beacon of liberty is tethering at a line, Pastor Suzanne. And the reason she hasn't crossed over the line completely is because of intercessors like Suzanne Heen, Linda Vega, and others who are at the gates crying for this nation because America is teetering at the line between freedom and tyranny. When I came to America, I was so excited, Linda. I could say anything because I came from Africa where I saw you say something and tomorrow nobody knows where you went. You have been disappeared supernaturally. Disappeared supernaturally. And you are going too far. You know where to go. I told you. Yes, there. Disappeared. So when I came to America in 1998, 1997, I did a dance. And I went, I began to watch television and I began to see people talking and pointing at the government. Oh, this government from both sides. I'm like, my God. And nobody's dead. This is amazing. But now... I have more liberty in Africa than in America. The country is teetering. Between tyranny and freedom. Life is controlled by lines. Even nations are controlled by lines. When the Lord said tonight, when you jump the bloodline, you're not jumping for you. God says you are jumping to correct every line your bloodline crossed they should not have crossed. God says, I'm going to go back in your bloodline and fix the breach. And mantles, mantles that should have been operative in your family but the devil had legal rights in the courts of heaven to arrest them because of all the lines your ancestors crossed they should not have crossed today those mentors will be released as you cross over God will do for you what he did for Hezekiah he will cause the sun to move backwards to the sundial of Ahaz, he will erase the memory of those who went before you and all that they did that affects you today. And mantles will fall, mantles will fall, prophetic mantles, wealth mantles, healing mantles. intercessory mantles are going to fall. God's going to fix a lot of things. I never suppose, because I'm not God, I never know. Jump the line always shocks me because there's way more happening than God ever tells me. You know how I know? When people begin to testify and say, this happened. I'm like, what? This happened. This happened. God did this. You're going to believe God now. So when you come here, you must understand these two lines. The two lines that affect men. Bloodlines. Bloodlines are generational lines. They are lines that connect us to the people of yesterday. 
and all that they did and did not do. The bloodlines are the lines that say, don't think you are free if you are still connected to those who did what they did. But I just came to Christ in 2000. How can a man who was dead in the 1900 affect me? Bloodlines? Bloodlines. The other lines that affect us, and bloodlines affect us in many ways. The bloodlines also affect us when the enemy hijacks the bloodline, when he puts a demonic program. You wake up one day, you never used to suffer from depression, but one day you have a bad dream, and from that day, depression is what you are fighting. What do you think happened? A program. Guys, if hackers, if natural hackers, earth, if anything natural tells you the spiritual, if there are men who can hack the Pentagon, and put programs in the Pentagon that were not there before by hackers. They are that good. You think demons are not, you think super intelligence beings don't know how to hack? Especially for many of us because we are such an open door to the bloodline because during the day we don't even know how to obey the one who protects us all. The doors we open through our disobedience connect us to problems in the bloodline that have nothing to do with generation or see the bloodlines and it's not, it's not just about the generational stuff it's about the stuff it's about the programs that the fallen ones program into your bloodline talk to me somebody because the door was left open and while you slept slept in what while you slept in disobedience the enemy came the enemy came and install the program because you had the legal right to hack your blood and God could not protect you because you slept in disobedience while men slept. But then the last blood line is situational lines. Write them down. These are called sidelines. Sidelines, sorry, sidelines. What are sidelines? Sidelines are situational lines. You better understand it if I use a sports analogy. In sports, in the NBA, it's, it's, it, the NBA is clearly laid out. This is, works out in the NBA beautifully and amazingly. And God used the NBA to teach me, the NBA and the NFL to teach me the power of a sideline. So, that's why, from one, that's why players in the NBA, they cry if they lose a championship when they are there. Why? Because they know they may never come back there again. Why? Same team, the next year, your best player is sidelined by an injury for the whole year. Now the team is not the same. He can still play, but he's hurt. And you lose, the, you go to lose again, you have a losing season. Same players who took you to the championship. Now you have a very bad record because two or three of the best guys are sitting on the sidelines because they have an injury. Many of you, you're on the sidelines of destiny because an injury happened to you. And you were sidelined. Today, God says, give me all your sidelines. Let, let go of the unforgiveness. I know they hurt you. I know whatever they did. It was not your fault that you were molested. It was not your fault that somebody that you trusted stabbed you in the back. But get over the sideline. Because if you stay along on the sideline, the demonic beings know how to work that to their favor. Let's stand up everywhere because I believe God is about to do something powerful. Hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, 
Come and sing it. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, hey. Sing it one more time. Hey, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, Some of you are sidelined by disease. May God heal you tonight as you jump the bloodline. Raise your hand if you need a healing in your body. I want you to note, to note what you're feeling now and then note what you're going to feel when you jump the bloodline. You see, lines can speak loudly. Have you ever had people when they are sick and when they are sick and tired of being sick and tired, and then they say, "I'm drawing the line." So lines can represent a determination for breakthrough. Why you say like Jacob, "I will not let you go. This is it. I I will not attend one more conference without encounter. This is the day you meet with me and God." And you see, spirits know when men. Are ready for business. You know why God has not encountered you? You are not serious yet. You can lie to everybody, but you can't lie to a spirit. Especially when God is that spirit. I want an encounter. Then you're thinking, I hope it happens before 12, 12 p.m. Because I'm going to be asleep by 1 o'clock so that I can be there at the, uh, by 7 o'clock. You know, I've got, a, I've got a doctor's appointment. You know, oh my Lord, I want an encounter. Now, all of us are, and then you've got to cry. And, then, and, and since, talk to me somebody, amen. That's what I'm saying. And some of you have an anointing for crying anyway. Amen. Hollywood has not just discovered you for those parts. Because you cry in a, <laughs> I want an encounter, baby. And all of us are mesmerized by your tears and your desire for encounter. But the spirit is not even smiling because God knows you are lying. You are not ready. But there is a time when men grab the attention of a spirit. There are times when men can grab the attention of a spirit. Let me go for the day breaketh. A spirit is talking to a man. But the man says, I may be weaker. I may have flesh on me. You may be a spirit. But I will not let you go until you bless me. And the spirit says, Ah, he's serious. He really wants the encounter. And the spirit says to a man, You have drawn the line in the sand, haven't you? He says, No. Not another one more meeting with just showers of your presence. I gotta have you now. You are going home with me. What is your name? Jacob. You can be Jacob when you convince the spirit that you are serious. Your weakness can't remain the day you convince the spirit. The day you convince the spirit. The day you convince the spirit, you mean business. I'm sorry, you can't remain the same. I hope tonight is that night when this jumping the bloodline is you saying, God, when I jump that bloodline, I want it to mean so many things for me. But one of the things it must mean is when I jump the line, 
I'm telling you, God, finally, at this age, after all these years of fighting with me, I'm giving you all of me. Maybe, maybe it's going to be like that. I don't think it's going to be that for everybody, but I hope it was for everybody. Oh, I, how I would, it was for everybody. I would. How I would, that would, that would be for everybody. God, when I jump that bloodline, I jump that bloodline. The spirit of lust that has been fighting me dies. Dies. I'm coming into a new place. I'm about to do it. But I'm telling you, a spirit has drawn the line. And the Lord told me when they jump today, with a sincere heart I will take out of their bloodlines anything that was programmed into them by the fallen ones during the COVID cloud of death and darkness and also I will do many things get ready I'm about to pray I want you to get ready because I'm going to lead you in a prayer it's a prophetic prayer then what I'm going to ask is that you just do exactly as I tell you when you jump the bloodline. It's a simple thing. When the Lord showed me jumping the bloodline and the people jumped the bloodline, in the vision, when the people jumped the bloodline, the bloodline disappeared. The, the bloodline with all that noises of iniquity disappeared. But then I heard I saw a spirit. First time I ever saw what I understood as a concept, I now saw as a spirit. I saw a spirit of Tehillah praise. Praise is a spirit. I saw a spirit of Tehillah praise come and enter all of them. And I've never seen men praise God like that. It was intense praise. Pure and outdated praise. I said, Yeshua, what? I said, Lord, what are you showing me? He says, every time I, I lead you to cause my people to jump the bloodline, when they jump the bloodline, they cannot stay silent before my father. They must give him a Tehillah praise because it's the praise that seals the transaction. It's a praise. And so, we're going to pray. When I say jump, from the first row, we're going to begin to jump. Everybody's going to come. We've won one, one way. It, I did it the same way for Maldonado, and there was a bigger crowd. 4,500 people were not even that close. What am I trying to say? You're going to come and jump the bloodline that's, that's been put over here. And by the way, when I begin to pray, even if I don't mention some things, the Lord is saying, tell my people, you honor what you attach to the line. Because you see, everybody here has a story that's different from the other. So God says, you honor what you attach to the line up on top of what I lead you into as speed of God leads me. But you can attach something to the line. You see, there's something about spirits I'm finding out. And God is a spirit. I keep talking about spirits. Spirits love to be challenged by men who mean business. So today, you can attach things to that line and say, God, ABC, when I jump the line, you have to do ABC. Attach to Whatever God, God will honor. So there'll be so many miracles, so many stories. So I want you to pray this prayer after me now. Thank you, Jesus. Impressed him when you jump the line, you can come and live. Yeah, yeah. 
but I want to blow it up because something's going to happen supernatural. The angels are here. God is here. We're doing what he told us to do. So when you jump the line, because of them, so many people, this is what we're going to do. When you jump the line, it's by the, the front row. When you jump the bloodline, because you'll be the first one to jump the bloodline. Unless the power of God hits you and you can't walk, I understand because that happens. But I want you, when, you are, when you've jumped, to go around the line to your seats. But everybody else can continue to come and jumping over the bloodline. You go. You do not cross it back because you reverse what you just did. It's like going get, it's like it's like going back to get the vomit when God has already released it. So you don't cross it. You do not cross it back. You cross, you go around it. That's why we didn't push it. We want to make sure that you can jump. Amen. Then you go to your right or to your left. Unless the pilot got to hit you. Then all we ask the rest of people is somebody probably got to hit them and they can't really walk. They're under the power. Just walk over them graciously. Amen. This happens a lot. Just go. But we want everybody from the back to here to experience this. Because God is about to do something supernatural. Amen. Okay, let's pray now. Say, Heavenly Father, I by faith step into that ancient of days court to receive your righteous judgment over my bloodline, my genetic inheritance. And anything in my bloodline, Satan has compromised while I slept. I ask that you judge me concerning those things. In the name of Jesus. For your judgments are true. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, as I stand before the court of heaven, I simply say guilty as charged to any, to any legitimate accusations lodged against me and my bloodline in this court by the accuser, the adversary. I just agree. I agree by repenting. I say, Lord, forgive me and my forefathers. For lines we crossed in disobedience, in idolatry, we should never have crossed. I repent for the breach that was caused in the realm of the spirit. Heavenly Father, your word says, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, thank you for forgiving me of my sin, both personal and generational. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father and righteous judge. I also come to be judged for sidelines that have happened to me and that have allowed to control me and my destiny. Sidelines that have caused me to focus on Nursing my injury. Nursing my offense. Nursing my fears. Then getting off the bench. And getting back into the field of destiny. Lord, I'm asking 
I'm asking that by the blood of Jesus, your word, heal me of it. Deliver me from the part of these sidelines. And forgive me, Lord, for holding on to the injury instead of coming to you to heal me as I forgive those who despitefully used me or abused me. I forgive any human being connected to any injury that I'm suffering. I forgive them. I let it go. I receive the forgiveness of God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, righteous judge, I make a petition tonight in the name of your only begotten son, Yeshua, that tonight when I jump over the prophetic bloodline, when I jump over the prophetic bloodline, I make a petition for the removal supernaturally and completely of all demonic programs that were installed in my DNA or bloodline while I slept in dreams weaponized by the demonic powers against me. I thank you, Lord, that as I jump the bloodline, all those demonic programs of lust, fear, depression, anger, jealousy will be removed out of my system. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father and Righteous Judge, I petition your court tonight that when I jump the bloodline, when I jump the bloodline, May you begin to cleanse my blood anew in the name of Jesus. Lord, I petition you to remove all monitoring programs that could have been installed in my bloodline so the demonic and those who work for the demonic can monitor me. I say, Lord, take me off the greed. Take me off the greed. In the name of Jesus, as you remove these demonic programs. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father and righteous judge, I also petition you and your court for the removal out of my bloodline, out of my life, any evil altar that is operating in my bloodline, I declare and decree that it shall be removed and destroyed in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, furthermore, I petition your court that I, when I jump the bloodline, you will disassociate me from the iniquities of my mother's bloodline and my father's bloodline. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I further petition you that when I jump the bloodline, when I jump the bloodline, I petition you to usher me into a new realm of glory like I've never known before. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I also release my faith for the healing of my physical body. From any malady, from any infirmity, any demonically engineered diseases. I release my faith that when I jump the bloodline, your power, your healing power, would tabernacle in my physical body and heal me in Jesus' name. I believe, Lord, 
that for this purpose, you brought me to this miracle conference. In Jesus' name. And I declare and decree by faith that my miracles start today in Jesus' name. Wow. Are you ready? Do you feel that? Do you feel that power? It's surging through the building. So, front line, get closer to the line. And everybody else begin to get off. Everybody, everybody remember what's going to be. You're going to be going in the aisles and coming, on the aisles and coming. You know, nobody comes from that. All the aisles go this way. Then you jump and then you can go back that way. So we don't create a, a log jam of any kind. You know what you have to do with your press team. Any member of the press team? Are there any members? Okay, do two. Good. You know what you have to do. Hallelujah. And the Lord says to me to tell you as well that when you jump the bloodline, you, madam, are finally going global. You are finally going global. Your music, your voice, your travel, you're going to travel so much, you're going you're to, I see an assistant to travel with you. Because you're going to travel so much. Okay? The, the things the Lord showed you that have kept you up at night because you keep seeing other people rise and you pass you by. But God said, you watch me do it. Okay? All right? Okay? And also the Lord says, by next year, this time, you already be married. Okay? When you jump, this is it. The line has been drawn in the sand. Because you've been pounding at heaven's door. And he has heard. He has heard. So, the front line, you jump. But remember what I said? Project into the line, even what I did not say. Because spirits can pick up thought. And thought in the realm of the spirit is louder than mouth. So project into it what I did not say because I don't know your story. But I've covered what my spirit was being led to do. But what you project into that line, what it means after tonight for you, only God who's a spirit and you will know. And maybe we'll find out later when you begin to testify because this is what God did. Okay? Hallelujah. This place is about to explode with the power of God, with the worship of God. Angels are all over the building for this. You guys ready? Okay. So when they jump the line, everybody begins to come. It's free for all. You come, you jump the line. But remember when you jump the line, you don't go like, and then you walk away like, uh-uh. When you jump the line, you give Yeshua, God, a tehillah praise. You praise him like he just gave you a million dollars because actually he gave, he's giving you more by this one prophetic act. Talk to me, somebody. Amen? All right. Thank you. Here we go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, jump into your deliverance now! Everybody come. Jump into your deliverance now. I want it very strong. Don't wait. Just jump as you come. Into your deliverance. Jump into your deliverance. Jump into your deliverance. Jump into your new season. Jump into your healing. Jump into your deliverance. Jump into your miracle.
Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. The Lord says many of you, you can check your body. You're going to find out that the pain has already gone. While you were air hiding, he was healing you. Amen. So many, while you're jumping the bloodline, you are being healed by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 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 Check your body. You know, do what you couldn't do before, and you're going to find out God has already done it by His Spirit. Uh huh. God has already done it. God has already healed your body. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So many people being healed already. I'm telling you. Hey, yeah, yeah. 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 